Hello. Hello everyone, so welcome to the stream today. Good afternoon, good evening to you, and I believe you're doing well and you are preparing for your examination. In that case, we want to look at the part two of the uh, final account of the MMDAs which we started yesterday. We looked at the various working. So today, what I want to do is to put the pieces together because uh, to put the pieces together to prepare the statement of financial performance as well as the statement of financial position for Accra Metropolitan Assembly. So if you join the stream, consider to give us a thumbs up on the video. And then you comment in the chat box with any questions that you have for me. I'll be doing some Q&A today after we put the pieces together. So if there are any questions, anything you want me to share my thoughts on to, or to assist you with, don't hesitate, put it in there chat box for me and I'm going to be answering all of them for you in that. Okay, so I see the roll calls of people coming in there. Zolak, I see you. Enyonam, I see you. Patience, I see you. Irene, I see you. You are welcome to the stream. Give us a thumbs up on the video that way we get more engagement. And if you know there is somebody that must watch the stream who is not here, come on, share the video with them and then they can also be part of the stream and learn and watch this very important uh, area that you must understand when it comes to public financial management or public sector accounting and finance. So yesterday we did a various workings that we need to look at. Uh, for the question that we have at hand. Um, Kwachi, Isaac, I see you, marvelous work. Thank you, Kwachi. If you have any questions, put it in the chat box for me. Any questions, maybe it's not related to the public sector or financial statement of public sector entities that we are looking at, but if you have questions that relates to anything, you can put it in the chat box for me and I'm gonna be uh, reading them and then answering them as well for you in that. So we want to put the pieces together. Just a quick reminder, yesterday, what we did, we got a couple of items for our workings. So <clears throat> let's go straight to our statement of financial performance. Now remember, because the examiner gave us some budgeted information, so let me open to my question here. Accra Metropolitan Assembly, that is question 41 in the ICAG manual. So in case you didn't watch it yesterday, we are just continuing with that question. Yeah, question 41, Accra Metropolitan Assembly. Remember, like I said, the Accra here is not the Accra, you know, ACC, ACC, um, RA, Accra, you sure I cannot spell Accra. And then this is Accra as in A K R A, so like this Accra Metropolitan Assembly. AMA. So this is what we have, and we are preparing one. The examiner said we should prepare the statement of financial performance for the year and then 31st December 20x8. But if we look at the question closely, you realize that uh, we've been given some budget information for the period. We are told that the budget performance reports at the end of the year revealed that the assembly exceeded internally generated fund and donation targets by 2,000 or 2 million Ghana cities and then 200,000 Ghana cities. 
What it means is that in the preparation of the statement of financial performance, we must prepare it in a columnar form by bringing both the budget information as well as the actual information, all right? So we're gonna be bringing both the budget information and then the actual information. So let's look at how that is gonna be. So we can put our actual here and our budget will be here. And as always, you have notes, okay? Uh, that is your working slide. So notes and then the budget. So we work it in three zeros up, guys, and this. In that case. So I have my workings here. So I'm gonna be sharing that with you. Doreen, I see you. You are welcome to the stream. Any questions, you put it in the chat box for me. So based on the workings that we did, remember we are going to, now, <laughs> I made an error here. After the AMA, I'm supposed to write the statement we are preparing, right? Which is the statement of financial performance for the year ended 31st December 2018. Let me do that. It's important, okay? So let me even clean the whole thing and redo it. Professional presentation is key. So Accra Metropolitan Assembly. And we are preparing the, we may decide not to even underline that. We are preparing the statement of financial performance. For the year ended. 31st December 2018. All right. Then we can now put the things up for the column areas in that. So the actual will be here. The budget will be here. And we have the notes coming in. And working three zeros up. Three zeros up. Make sense? Then we go to the next item and that is to bring our revenue. Now, under the revenue, we did the workings for the revenue, but we mentioned that there were three uh, revenue items to be dealt with. Decentralized transfer. Decentralized transfer. And then internally generated funds. And then donations of, let's see the name that was there in the question. Um, you know, we asterisk a couple of things that we will deal with them later on. Uh, we see donor support, so we can call it donation and grant. So let's go. We did workings for the first two, so notes one for decentralized transfer, notes two for internally generated fund. Now remember, what we are going to be bringing here is the actual. Then based on the actual, we'll be able to get a budget in accordance with the information given to us about the budget of the organization of the uh, local government. So let's look at it. So from our workings, let me go to my image that I took yesterday. So from our workings, we are seeing, that should be here, decentralized transfers. I'm having uh, 110455. Then the share of um, internally generated fund, I'm having 280,000. 
280,253. Then the donations and grants, that was directly in the trial balance. And that was in the trial balance as 90,000. That was directly there as 90,000. Let's see, 770, I guess. 90,770. So these were the actual figures that we have. Now, having the actual figures in mind, the examiner mentioned something about the budget. It says, the budget performance report at the end of the year revealed that the assembly exceeded its internally generated fund and donation targets by 2 million Ghana cities and 200,000 Ghana cities respectively. So 2 million Ghana cities and then 200,000 Ghana cities respectively. So when it comes to internally generated funds, it is increasing by 2 million. So if it is increasing by 2 million, what is going to be happening in there? So internally generated funds increasing by 2 million, whilst donations by 200. So the budget will be, we increase this by 2 million, and that is going to be, no, I think, I did, I did two images for uh, our work is, the internally generated fund is supposed to be 287.453 instead. The reason is that um, there was an interest income and the first workings we did, we didn't add it. And I said, because we are dealing with the internally generated fund, we need to add it up. So the new figure is 287.453. And we are told that this internally generated fund for the organization is increasing by 2 million. So if it is increasing by 2 million, what is happening there? It means that, remember you are working three zeros up. So if it is increasing by 2 million, that means we're going to be having 2,000 in there. So if we are having 2,000 in there, the statement the examiner made was the um, the, the assembly exceeded internally generated fund and yes, exceeded internally generated fund and donation target by 2 million and then 200,000. So donation is 2 million. So 2 million is going to be like 2,000 in there. So that I'm going to be having um, they exceeded so this is going to be two eight five four three four five three. They exceeded, meaning that the budget was less than what they actually had during the period under consideration. Then for their donation, they exceeded by just two hundred thousand. So two hundred thousand exceeded. It means this will be ninety five seven zero. Does it make sense? Two hundred thousand. Okay. 200,000 in that case. Then let's see what else the examiner said. He said, expected government support for the year fell by 1 million. Expected government support for the year fell by 1 million. Government support is part of decentralized transfer. So if it fell by 1 million, that means this was 111455. I get it. 111455 because it is reducing by what? One million in that case. So these are our revenue items. We start it up to get a total revenue. Then we come to the expenditure items. You remember the expenditure items we had? With the expenditure, we had compensation to employees. Let me go there. I had 88 compensation to employees or compensation of employees. I, that is note two. 
Okay, so internally generated final was node three. This is node two. And it is 88,685. That was what we had. Then goods and services. That is note four was seven eight four six. Then we had capital consumption, right? That is working five for that. Capital consumption. Working five. I'm putting this in bracket four five. And we had um, twenty five thousand five hundred and five. 501, 25,501. That was the capital consumption. Then, do we, did we have any other item that is supposed to come here? Let me go through my working slide. Okay. Okay. No other. So let's go to the trial balance, give it to us, and let's find out what is happening. There was special social intervention that will come here. Special social intervention. It was given directly straight up. So we pick it up and that is 235. Then interest on fixed deposits. If you remember, we did a working yesterday and I said we'll add 500 to the 6,700 in the trial balance. So interest, that's going to be the 6,700 plus 500, and we have 7,200. So any other item we did not bring, I think that is all about that. Let's see. Um, finance charges. No, 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 I'm making a mistake. This interest of each one was rather an income that we added because it has a credit balance. Sorry about that. The interest we are going to be bringing is the interest payable, and that is 98 here. These are some of the things. So if you mess it up, then you'll be in trouble. Then let's see if there is any other item we are supposed to bring. Um, we take out a couple of things. See that revenue, rent has come. Our loans is a statement of financial position item. We brought an issue about casual uh, workers in that case. Okay. So I think that will be all in that. Now, let's go to the statement and then let's find out what uh, we are having in that case. <laughs> uh, patient said, sir, please, today the speed is no, 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 no. Please calm down. Okay. <laughs> you know, we've done the work case already. So, uh, we are just uh, bringing in the figures in here. So let me see and then take it again in that case. So revenue expenditure is going to come in. And we, we've done workings for these guys already, isn't it? Decentralized transfer, uh, internally generated fund, donations is coming. How are we getting the budget? In? We are getting the budget because of the statement that the examiner has made to us. Now, when it comes to the expenditure column, we see compensation to employees, goods and services, we did workings for that yesterday. Consumption of expenditure, we did a workings for that yesterday. Special social intervention, that is like social benefit. So we bring it up. Then the interest that we paid, it was given in the trial balance as 98 just before you come to allowances to start in that case. So these were the expenditure items that we had.
Kofi Poku said, God bless you for your good work. Amen, God bless you too. So in the information, we are told that, however, it has overspent in compensation of employees by 500. It has overspent in compensation to employees by 500. Okay, so it means that compensation to employees, the budget has to be less than this. So 88685 minus 500. That's 88185. Then let's see what's happening to the rest. Goods, wealth underspent goods and services by 800. So goods and services is being underspent by 800. So it means uh, the budget will be more than this. So that is going to be 7846 plus 800. So that will be 8646. Now, consumption of fixed assets, that one, nothing will come under the, with, with the budget. Okay, nothing will come with the budget under like that. Then we see. Other expenses out there was exactly what was expected. So other expenses out there was exactly what was expected, meaning that uh, interest, the budget was the same thing. And then the social intervention or social, special social intervention, it was also the same thing. Does it make sense? So remember how we are getting the budgeted results we are getting the budgeted results based on the information given to us standing at the actual results. Okay, Josephine, I see you. You are welcome. Uh, patient said, thank you, sir. You are welcome. So let's put the pieces together and let's find out whether we will make a deficit or we will make a surplus. So let's add the revenue up. One one zero four five five plus two eight seven four three four five three plus ninety seven seven zero, and I'm getting four eight eight six seven eight. That is the actual total revenue. Let's get a budget. One 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 four five five plus two eight five four five three plus ninety fifty seven zero four eight seven four seven eight. In that case. Then let's add the expenditure up respectively. Now you can confirm, okay? If you punch and it's not the same thing, you draw my attention. 88685 plus 78846 plus 2501. Plus three two three five plus ninety-eight. And I'm getting one, two, two, three, six, five. One, two, two, three, six, five. Let's make sure we get that one. Yeah, then we come to the budget 88185 plus 8646 plus 235 plus 98. 
And that is that is seven one six four. So that is total expenditure. Total expenditure. So once we have this, we can now strike the difference and get the surplus or deficit. If you check, <laughs> there's a huge surplus. Huge surplus. Four, eight, eight, six, seven, eight. Minus one, two, two, three, six, five. And I'm getting three, six, six, one, three, one. Three, six, six, three, one, three, brother. Three, six, six, three, one, three. And that is surplus. And I guess you have surplus on both sides. Four, eight, seven, four, seven, eight, minus nine, seven, one, six, four. And I'm getting three ninety three fourteen. Ah, this figure should be more than ninety seven. What did I do? Oh, it's like that. Let's take it again. Eight eight one eight five plus eight six four six plus two three five plus nine eight. Now you make sure you confirm these figures, okay? Minus four eight seven four seven eight. I'm getting three ninety three seven eight. I'm getting three ninety three one four. So we are getting surplus in the cases that we have there. So once you have your income statement prepared, before you go to the statement of financial position, you need to look at the accumulated fund. So I told you about it yesterday. Accumulated fund. And that will be the accumulated fund going forward. In the trial balance, our accumulated fund brought forward. Let's see. Mm, accumulated fund, accumulated fund. Okay. The last but four item there, 34, 481. 34481. And we are having a surplus here. So we add the surplus from the income statement. 366-313. So the accumulated fund brought down is going to be adding it up. Adding it up, 34481 plus 366313. That's 400, 794. 400, 794. So that is our statement of financial performance, putting the pieces together putting the pieces together. So you put it down and then let's go. I'm gonna give you some few minutes on that. Any questions, you put it in the chat box for me. I'm going to snap as well and put it on Instagram. So you keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So I believe you are done. Let's map this up. So let's look at the statement of financial position. That's going to be the final aspect on it. So in our statement of financial position, we're going to have our assets in there and bring the asset items in there, property plans and equipment, we need the workings for that. Let me open to my working slide. PPE was not five because that's where we take the depreciation from or the capital consumption from. Then there was a work in progress that we said we won't charge any amount on. And so that is going to be brought as well. So let's see. Let's clean this. So statement of financial performance, sorry, position. As at the repair December 2018. Remember, we are working um, three zeros up. Have a note in here. Then let's bring the item. At non current assets, or maybe we can have assets first, the non current assets, and the non current assets, like I said, working five we did for property plants and equipment. So let's bring it up. That is note five, and we have two, two, nine, five, four, oh, seven. Then there was work in progress in the suit in the travel. And I told you we won't do anything with it, we'll just bring it out straight here. And that was, let's go there and pick it up. 119900. So these are our non-current assets. Then we bring the current assets. If you look at the question carefully, we have, um, let's see. Oh, what were the things we think? Advances to staff is there. And I told you that will come under receivables. And what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Uh, we see bank and cash there that will come there as a single 
items there. Then remember, we are due for an interest of five hundred, which we are supposed to uh, receive. So let's see. Advances to staff there is five nine. Eight nine. Then we also have the contract mobilization. Remember, I told you that is a balance sheet item, right? So that is also under a receivable item. So that is going to be coming there. So advances or loans, then receivables, and then cash and bank. So the contract mobilization, more or less like money, that is about money that has been given out to contractors who have not started jobs. Remember there is contract retention, that is also uh, part of the payables, and we did workings for that uh, yesterday. So the advances that is going to be um, the five nine eight nine, which is the staff, and then the contract mobilization of five eight three four five. So I'm getting a total of six four three three four. Then receivables, remember it was 500, the loan that was outstanding. Then cash and cash or cash and bank is in the question as the travel balance. Give me travel balance. Cash, 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 cash. Where is cash? Bank and cash, 21,109. 21,109. That's going to be cash and cash equivalent there. Then there was a loan item of one, two, three, four. You bring it here. One, two, three, four. All that will be under our receivables. Now, why are we not taking the loan to long term under non current liabilities? Because since it is not classified, it means it's a short-term loan that we are having. So six four three three four plus five hundred plus two one one zero nine plus one two three four, and that's going to be eighty seven one seven seven eighty seven one seven seven. Let's get a non-current asset. One one nine nine hundred plus two two nine five four seven three four nine four oh seven. So total assets. Let's get total assets. That will be eight seven one seven seven, and I'm getting four three six five eight four. Okay, four, three, six, five, eight, four in that case. All right, so let's move on with the rest of the items there. Oh, there was something we missed fixed deposit. There was a fixed deposit of 14,000. That should be there. <laughs> so let's bring it up. Fixed deposits will, rather, will usually be under the non carriage So let me bring it here. Let me punch this figure down so I don't have to do it all the way. So three, four, nine, four, four, seven. Meaning I didn't look at the question well, right? So I'm going to chip it in here. Okay, I'm just going to chip it in here. Fixed deposits. 
fixed deficits. And that is 14,000. Okay, so I'm adjusting it there so that the total non current assets could be plus 14,000. And that's 363. 407. So when I now add it to the 8711, so 87177, I'm getting 450, 584. 450, 584. So that is our total assets. Makes sense? That's our total assets. Now let's go to the equity and the liabilities. Now, remember our accumulated fund, let me put this figure somewhere, 00794, we're going to be bringing it up a moment, moment. So let's see what's happening under the liabilities. In this question, we didn't see them really. Okay, there was a loan. Were they having a loan on the credit side? Accra. Yes, they were having a loan from the GCD bank. And so that would be under non-current what? Liability in that case. So accumulated fund and liabilities. So I will break up the accumulated fund. And we did a working for that. And that is 400, 794, 400, 794. Then we bring the liabilities. Okay, and the non carrot. We're gonna have the GCB. Loan of thirteen thousand. I think that was the only non current asset in there. Then we bring non current liability, rather. Then we bring the current liabilities. The first one will be let me change my marker more or less like it's a bit faint. So payables, we need a workings for payables. So let me go to my workings slide. Mm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. 34,495, that was number six. 34,495. Then remember the stores we rented. The people paid, we did a workings for that. The people paid an amount of 1860, but we were told that it's for two years. But they started renting from 1st July. So it means that there is an amount outstanding. Okay, we brought those figures under, did we add it under payables? No, we didn't add it under payables. So deferred. Market store receipts. So the balancing figure, that's going to be the money we receive 1860 minus what was charged for the current year 465. And so I get 1395. I hope you are getting the concept. During the year, the Metropolis uh, constructed a, a store and rented it out from 1st July. And the whole amount the people paid was 1860. But the 1860 is for uh, two years. But they started the renting on 1st July. So if you check 1st July to December, that is six months. So for our statement of financial performance, we recognize only six months. That is one fourth of it. So the three fourth is just one three five and it has to become uh, we, I told you we would recognize as a deferred income, so it must come under the liabilities.
Then, so payables, uh, markets, stores. Let's see if that is all the items we are supposed to have. Yes, I guess that's the only items we are supposed to have. We've touched on everything so far. So let's add up and let's see if our statements will balance. Three, four, four, nine, five, plus one, three, nine, five. That is three, five, eight, nine, zero. So let's add that plus 13,000. Plus four hundred seven nine four. <laughs> I'm getting forty one hundred forty nine thousand six hundred and eighty four, and so there is going to be some difference. There's a difference of nine hundred. Where could that nine hundred be? Could it be arithmetic errors? It's possible. Okay. Accumulated funds and liabilities. So let's see if probably I can find um, where that is supposed to be. Usually, this side is not going to be having a lot of issue. So the issue may be here. So let's see if there was any 900 that I didn't take into consideration. So you can write, you can start writing as I look for. Um, if I look for, as I look for the possible cost of a 900, where it could be. Let's see. It could be an arithmetic error somewhere. Maybe I did not write any figure. Well, I'm not going to go through it. So you're going to go through it and then find out about the 900. If you find it out, you can send me a message on it. Because um, I'm trying to see if it will be somewhere. Or oh, we missed the workings or so. Okay, so basically, that is it. Let's take the picture. I'm going to post this on Instagram. Okay, so this is how we prepare the final account of MMBA, that is the Metropolitan Municipal District Assemblies. Any questions for me?
Okay. So that is it about final account of public sector entities or financial statements of public sector entities. So we've tried to look at on the consolidated fund level, we've also tried to Yes, patience. It's one one nine nine hundred. That was what was given to us in the question. Work in progress. One one nine nine hundred. Yes, it's one one nine nine hundred. So we've tried to look at the final account of the central government. That's on the consolidated fund. <clears throat> then the final account on the local government, that is the MBA and then the MMBA. And uh, that's it. So remember the treatment of the various items and the various uh, recognition and the items. Alexander, I think he said he's having problem commenting. So I think he has sent me a message here. Let me see. Okay, so Alexander is saying that the 900 is from the goods and services figure. Let me see. Yesterday, we had goods and services. Wait, 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 Goods and services. Yeah, but we corrected. Didn't we change the answer? Yeah, we corrected and changed the answer. And that's the figure I'm using here. Oh, okay. I didn't use the change figure. Oh, 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 oh. So I'm the cause of the problem. Goods and services. I used the first figure, which is the 7846. Instead of the corrected figure we had of 6946. Okay, okay, Alexander, thank you very much. So that is where the error is coming from. So you have to go back to your income. Oh, a lot of things will be will have to be corrected. So the accumulated fund would have to be corrected because your surplus will be different for the goods and services. Our corrected goods and services should be. Six nine four six. Yesterday we corrected that. Louisa mentioned it, and I think I was using the old thing because I took the pictures together with some workings. I did not look at it well. So thank you, Alexander. I think I we get it now. Okay. So I'm not going to do the adjustments for you. So I'm just going to leave the adjustment for you to do, right? So go and correct goods and services in the statement of financial performance so that you get a new figure for the surplus so that the accumulated fund will be increased by 900. So in that case, our balance sheet is going to balance, okay? Our statement of financial position. So... You do the correction. I will leave it for you guys to do. So any questions, please? Any questions, please? All right. So I'm going to conclude here today um, for our discussions. And uh, this week, we've been really focusing and spending our time on what more or less like we spend the whole week on public sector uh, to look at what is happening there in that case. And uh, God willing, I will come your way 
tomorrow for some Q&A session. Then from next week also, I'll be doing some Q&A sessions with you because next week we are summarizing everything up. So whatever questions you have, uh, some minor challenges that you have, you can uh, bring them up next week and tomorrow as we'll be doing some Q&A sessions as well in that case. So thank you very much for joining the stream today. Um, Enyon Nam, Patience, Irene, Fache, Doreen, Kofi, Josephine, and all of you guys. It's always a pleasure coming your way. Okay, Patience said, please say, what is it about below the line and above the line accounts with assemblies? Usually below the line and above the line are on the consolidated fund, more or less like a central bank issue. Uh, it's about how the consolidated fund is classified. Now the above the line items and below the line items. Uh, one is in relation to uh, the allocations that we are making for the period under consideration. When at the end of the day, it is transferred below the line into uh, the reserves and the general reserves for the account. So these are usually for uh, the consolidated fund purpose and not for the uh, assembly. So it's about the classification of the consolidated fund above the line, below the line. And uh, I think there are four items there about the classification on the consolidated fund. Okay. Let me see if I can get my slide on that. So, Kwachi Isaac said, we appreciate you, brother. You're welcome. Okay, so maybe this is what I will do. I will touch on uh, maybe explain the whole consolidated fund, its components, and then maybe a number of things, uh, possibly tomorrow or Monday during our Q&A session. All right, so patients, I'll do that for you uh, tomorrow or Monday during our Q&A session as, as we continue with the discussion. So check out the playlist uh, and then watch the other videos there. If SAS is critical, make sure you solve uh, them and understand the principles on that very well. And I'll see you uh, same time tomorrow for Q&A sessions. And uh, for those of you doing, um, there will be some sessions, some private sessions that I'll be hosting as well. So follow me on Instagram and Facebook because details of those meetings will be available on my social media pages and you'll be able to get them. So you take care of yourself and stay blessed.